This story begins with our protagonist dozing off and being awakened by a girl named Sakura. After waking up, Shiro apologizes for not helping her clean the house. In great kindness, the girl says he can leave the house chores to her, and he gladly accepts. However, he still needs to organize the warehouse. Later on, we see that Shiro trains every day to maintain his shape. After a good workout, he attempts to have lunch during breakfast time, but his sister switched the spice labels, making his food exotic. When his sister leaves on her motorcycle, Shiro manages to finish the meal. At the same same time, our protagonist sees on TV that a gas leak is causing people to faint. In response, Sakura assures him they are safe because she checks the gas valve every morning. Later, at school, Sakura invites our protagonist to visit the dojo, but he declines, mentioning some work he needs to handle. After this, we learn that Shiro works fixing the school's electrical appliances. When he is alone, he uses some kind of magical power to analyze and discover the cause of defects. While fixing a stove, the student council president outside the room meets a girl named Tosaka. During their conversation, our protagonist goes out to take a look at the girl. After a brief exchange of glances, he continues his routine of studying and making repairs. During one of these repairs, the student council president advises him to stop being so kind and fixing everything for free, but Shiro ignores him and continues his work. At night, on his way home, Shiro encounters a little girl who tells him to quickly summon his something to avoid dying. Confused, he returns home, has dinner with Sakura and his unnamed sister, and goes to the warehouse to try materializing an object with his magic. Frustrated, he fails once again. Upset, our protagonist lies down, wondering how he will become a hero of justice if he can't even master something simple. The next day, Shiro notices a mark on Sakura's hand and tries to find out if her brother caused it, but she explains it was an accident. Later, at school, while having lunch with a friend, Shiro asks if she knows if anything is happening with Sakura. His friend explains that it might be related to her brother Shinji, who is upset because he was rejected by Tasaka Rin at school. Later, during the school's closing hours, Shiro decides to investigate and is found by Rin's friends. He is often mistaken for Shinji, but after resolving the misunderstanding, one of the girls says it's not good for Shiro to stay late at school. Since he doesn't participate in any clubs, it would be ideal for him to return home as soon as possible due to the strange murders and crimes happening in the city lately. While Shiro is heading home on the bus, he begins to remember his childhood when he was in the hospital. At that time, he survived a fire thanks to a man who rescued him from the debris. This man became Shiro's adoptive father and from an early age, our protagonist knew that his savior was a mage. With this knowledge, the boy grew up aspiring to become a mage so he could save people, just as he was saved. The next day, while heading home, Shiro encounters Shinji on the school stairs. At that moment, our protagonist expresses his desire to talk to Shinji about the mark on Sakura's arm. In response, Shinji quickly denies any involvement, and his lack of concern for his own sister convinces Shiro that Shinji is responsible. In the end, Shiro does nothing and even accepts to clean the school's dojo in place of Shinji to apologize for the fall false accusations. Shiro finishes cleaning late at night, and everyone has already left the school. Suddenly, our protagonist hears the sound of swords clashing, drawing his attention. Approaching the noise, Shiro comes across two guys engaged in an intense battle at the school. The man with the spear senses Shiro's presence, and since the school should be empty, he starts pursuing our protagonist. Shiro runs, trying to find a place to hide, but the spear-wielding man catches up and thrusts his spear right into Shiro's heart. After being hit, Shiro falls to the ground, ready to die. At this moment, Tosaka Saka Rin appears and finds Shiro lying on the ground. Recognizing our protagonist, Rin decides to use a kind of magical stone she received from her father to restore all his organs that had signed a contract with the Vasco. This way, Shiro obviously comes back to life. In the end, Shiro returns home and tries to understand how he is still alive. A few seconds later, the man with the spear reappears wanting to kill him again because, according to the guy, he can't let anyone who witnessed a servant battle live. When attacked, Shiro obviously tries to defend himself and evade the guy attacks, but the strength difference between them is huge. Just when everything seemed to be over for our protagonist, he manages to summon a blonde girl in armor holding an invisible sword, who happens to be a Saber-class servant. After being summoned and recognizing Shiro as her master, Saber says she came in response to his plea for help and will now protect him. With that said, the blonde girl with the invisible sword begins an intense battle against the spear-wielding servant. After countering her attacks with an extremely powerful and flashy strike from his spear, the spearman retreats. Saber, having a identified his true identity through this powerful move and his flashy attack names, notices the retreat. Following this, Saber mentions sensing the presence of two more enemies. Having said that, the invisible swordswoman swiftly heads towards a hidden enemy, who happens to be the archer servant. Without understanding what's happening, Shiro shouts at his servant to stop the attack and explain everything. At this moment, the renowned Asaka Rin appears, claiming to be the archer's master. She explains to Shiro that he has just entered a kind of tournament for the Holy Grail, the famous battle of the seven masters.
Masters, which occurs every few decades. In this event, each Master possesses a command seal on their hand, granting them absolute control over the Summoned Servant. The objective is relatively simple. All Masters must fight until the strongest among the seven survives and claims the Holy Grail. The winner, holding the Grail, can make any wish. Still not fully grasping the situation, Shiro follows Rin to a church. There, Rin reveals that she lives with a friend of her deceased father, a powerful priest who oversees the war to ensure everyone follows the rules. According to Rin, this priest can help Shiro understand how the Holy Grail War works. Despite understanding the mechanics, Shiro hesitates to eliminate the other masters and servants. The priest warns him that the Grail won't materialize without a winner, and if he doesn't eliminate others, he'll eventually be eliminated. In the worst case, if an evil master obtains the Grail, the consequences could be dire. The priest recounts a past incident where a malevolent person caused a great fire in the city ten years ago. After hearing the priest's words, Shiro decides to become a master, vowing to claim the Holy Grail to prevent it from falling into the wrong hands. He forms an alliance and a pact with Saber, who accepts him as her master, swearing loyalty and protection during the battles in this anime. Leaving the church, Shiro, his servant, and Rin are surprised by the arrival of a little girl accompanied by her giant servant. She introduces herself as Ilya but expresses disinterest in learning everyone's names, predicting their deaths by her berserker servant in a few minutes. With that, the cute girl orders her servant to attack, and in response, Saber takes the front lines to protect Shiro. This way, Saber engages in an intense battle against a berserker who basically has monstrous strength. During their fight, the berserker not only showcases his absurd strength, but also proves to be agile and skilled with swords. In the midst of this conflict, Rin commands her servant to assist Saber in her battle against the berserker. So, the archer, several kilometers away, launches a powerful arrow towards the berserker. With Rin's help and her magical stones, the arrow hits the berserker squarely, but unfortunately, it isn't enough to inflict damage on the giant. Afterwards, Saber continues the battle while Rin deals with a little girl named Ilias. Naturally, the two engage in a magical battle, but Rin eventually retreats, realizing she won't be able to defeat Ilias. She and Shiro head towards where Saber is fighting. There, they witness Saber revealing the true form of her sword to deliver a powerful blow that almost splits the berserker in half. When the enemy seems defeated, he starts regenerating his injuries, demonstrating his noble phantasm, a special power each servant possesses. Far away, the archer takes advantage of the enemy's vulnerability and shoots a powerful arrow using his noble phantasm. Unfortunately, this powerful shot doesn't even scratch the barbarian. Feeling the pressure of a two-on- one situation, Ilias decides to retreat, acknowledging that the archer's long-range attacks pose a significant threat. After praising the archer, Ilias retreats with her servant, stating that she'll let them live for now. The next day, the protagonist wakes up without understanding what happened. Rin explains that he passed out due to his injuries, so she had to bring him home. After that, Rin leaves. Inside the house, the protagonist finds Saber resting and meditating alone. At that moment, Shiro asks if she's okay. In response, she says yes, and then asks him never to try to protect her during a battle, as it would be the greatest mistake a master could make. While having breakfast, Saber explains that while she and Rin were tending to Shiro's wounds, they started healing on their own. Saber believes that this is related to her regenerative abilities, and somehow, the two of them are connected, sharing this ability. Suddenly, Shiro receives a call from his half-sister, the quirky teacher from the school. She asks him to bring lunch for her, and Shiro goes, accompanied by Saber, who insists on not letting her master walk unprotected. Inside the school, Saber claims to sense a bit of magic, but according to her, the place is not dangerous. In the evening, as they were heading home, Shiro introduces Saber to Sakura and his so-called half-sister, Professor. In this introduction, our protagonist explains to both of them that Saber will be living with them from now on. Naturally, both Sakura and the Professor become suspicious, thinking that Shiro is secretly involved with the blonde girl, leading to some jealousy. In the end, they reluctantly accept, and after dinner, Shiro asks the Professor to accompany Sakura home because it's getting too late. However, she responds that it's not possible, as from now on, both she and Sakura will also be staying at his house. Unsure how to deal with this, Shiro is forced to accept this crazy idea. The next day, it is revealed that Sakura and the Professor had a long conversation with Saber, and they came to the conclusion that they all share the same goal, to take care of and protect Shiro. When Shiro is heading to school, Saber insists on accompanying him again. This time, however, he manages to convince her to stay home, as she has already confirmed that there is no danger at the school. Despite agreeing to stay home, Saber makes Shiro promise to use one of the command seals on his arm to summon her if needed. Upon arriving at school, Shiro encounters Rin in the corridor. At this moment, Rin is shocked to see that Shiro is foolish enough to go to school without a servant. Realizing this, Rin continues on her way, completely ignoring our protagonist, who doesn't understand why she is acting that way. Before the start of the class, the student council president informed Shiro that the captain of the school's archery club has been missing since the previous 
previous day. According to a schoolgirl, the last person the captain interacted with was Shinji. To make matters worse, when this unknown student saw them, they were arguing during the night, and since then, the captain has not been seen even at home. Upon hearing this, Shiro is eager to investigate the case, but the school is already completely empty. At that moment, Rin appears on the stairs and calls Shiro an idiot for walking around without his servant to protect him. The fact that he is being careless is kind of forcing her to remove him from the servant war. With that said, Rin shows a command seal on her other arm, explaining that it has been passed down through her family for generations, allowing her to cast any spell through that arm. At this moment, the two of them start facing off, and Shiro obviously tries to evade Rin, who is now determined to finish him right there. During this battle, Shiro attempts to protect himself by using his power to mend things, reinforcing objects to shield himself from Rin's spells. In order not to kill Shiro, Rin asks him to hand over the command seals on his arm. However, at that moment, they hear a scream coming from the lower part of the school. Upon reaching the scene, they find a nearly lifeless girl on the ground. After a quick examination, Rin explains that the girl is in this state because her mana was drained by some servant aiming to increase its power. Just as Rin is about to heal the girl, someone throws a stake towards her. In that moment, Shiro uses his arm to save Rin from being hit. Afterward, he tries to discover the source of the attack, leading him to a forest where his enemy, hidden among the trees, reveals themselves as a servant called Mystic and immediately attacks Shiro. In response, our protagonist tries to save himself at all costs with his reinforced staff. When the servant is about to capture Shiro, Rin appears to help him, and in the end, the enemy leaves Shiro behind and flees the scene. In the end, Rin once again helps Shiro with his injuries and gives up the idea of killing him, as he just saved her from that sneak attack. To take better care of Shiro's wound, Rin ends up taking him to her house. There, she proposes that they make a truce until this mysterious servant is defeated, as they won't allow the draining of mana from students to continue. Even though sealing this partnership with Shiro, Rin states that it doesn't change the fact that they will be enemies in the future. After all this, Rin orders her servant to protect Shiro on his way back home, and he reluctantly accepts being escorted by someone who actually wants to kill him. In response, Archer says he's just following orders from his master, as servants don't have their own choices. When Shiro arrives home very late, he finds Saber meditating in an attempt to overcome her concern. Facing his servant, Shiro explains everything that happened at school, including the fact that he formed a temporary alliance with Tasaka Rin. Upon learning that Shiro faced a servant alone instead of using a command seal to summon her, Saber gets upset. Not only that, but he formed an alliance without even consulting her. Despite everything, Saber aligns with Shiro's ideals, but from now on, she will train him. As he keeps getting into battles, she should be fighting. The next day at school, Shiro sees Shinji talking nonsense and mocking the fact that Shiro's friend, who happens to be the leader of the archery club, was found unharmed in an alley. Upon hearing this, Shiro approaches the guy to confront him. At this moment, Shinji gets irritated and claims not to have anything to do with the girl's disappearance, even though he was the last person to have seen her before it happened. Upon discovering the way she was found, Shiro concludes that she also had her mana sucked by that servant and leaves Shinji aside. After that, when everyone left the school, Shiro met Rin in the school library. During a conversation between the two, Rin realizes that Shiro has a certain power that helps him easily find nearby physical spells. All of this is because he managed to find a seal in the library belonging to a barrier magic surrounding the school by the enemy they are looking for. To delay the enemy's plans, Rin wishes to deactivate these seals. In the end, after a lot of effort finding and deactivating seals, Rin says goodbye and tells Shiro to be careful. However, when Shiro is about to leave, he is surprised by Shinji, who has now revealed himself to be the master behind the servant responsible for the barrier around the school. During all this time, he was watching them destroy his seals. After introducing himself, Shinji tries to form an alliance with Shiro. However, our protagonist refuses to do so and still uses his kindness to keep Shinji being a master a secret. On the same night, while Shiro rests after a tough training routine, our protagonist finds himself entangled in a kind of magical lines that bind him. These lines lead into the monk's temple in the mountains. In this temple, a woman claiming to be a master sorceress explains that she is behind the strange events occurring in the city. According to the woman, she is gathering the souls of innocent people to increase her strength. Meanwhile, Saber feels her heart race and soon realizes that Shiro is in danger, so she quickly heads towards the monk's mountain and senses his presence. But when Saber arrives at the temple, she is repelled by a barrier that prevents the passage of servants. At this moment, the sorceress's servant, a samurai in this case, appears to confront her. Meanwhile, inside the temple, the sorceress states her intention to take Shiro's command seals and his magical circuits. And when she starts doing what she said, she is attacked by several arrows, and shortly afterward, Shiro is saved by Rin's servant. This story follows the life of a boy who is a legend, but he has no idea about it, starting from the moment our protagonist had just been saved by Rin's servant after being saved. Outside the temple, we see the assassin 
class servant initiating a frenzied battle against Saber. On the other side of the screen, the archer reveals that this witch is a type of servant. According to Archer, she broke the rules of the war by disposing of her own servant and using the mana collected from the people in the city at this temple to summon an assassin class servant. Inside the temple, Archer engages in an insane battle against this sorceress who clearly demonstrates great power with her magic. In the midst of the battle, the witch traps Archer in a magical field, rendering him immobile. However, Archer surprises her by drawing two swords and launching a direct attack. Soon after, he uses his noble phantasm to unleash a powerful arrow. With no other options, the witch takes the full force of the attack and is severely injured. Instead of finishing her off, Archer opens his mouth and reveals that he only received orders to save Shiro and avoid unnecessary conflicts. Upon hearing this, the witch tries to propose an alliance, but Shiro rejects it as he would never align himself with someone who exploits innocence to become stronger. In the end, the witch retreats, and afterward, Archer explains to Shiro that he let her go because he wants her to continue draining energy and growing stronger. This way, she will gather enough strength to eliminate the berserker. According to Archer, he will deal with the witch and her assassin servant after that. Upon hearing this, Shiro is angered by Archer and tries to thwart his plan by going after the sorceress. However, as Shiro turns his back, Archer draws a sword and attacks him from behind, preventing the protagonist from risking his life in pursuit of the woman. Amidst the confusion, Shiro falls down the stairs and ends up at the temple's entrance. At that moment, Saber, who is nearby, rushes to help the injured Shiro. The assassin, a samurai, acknowledges Saber's bravery and loyalty to her master, stating that he will wait for another opportunity to face her in a battle to the death. The archer attempts to attack the assassin, but while they are fighting on the temple stairs, Saber seizes the chance to escape with Shiro. The next morning, Shiro wakes up feeling better, surprisingly with his injuries healed. Early in the morning, before going to school, he begins his training with Saber. Due to the training, he arrives late, and during the break, Ren impatiently waits for Shiro at the classroom door. Together, they go to the school rooftop, and as they have lunch, Ren apologizes for what her servant did the previous night. After apologizing, Ren said that she used a command seal on her servant so that he would never attack Shiro while they were allies. Furthermore, Ren revealed that she already knew Shinji was a master, but he posed no threat to her as she knew he was weak in magic. Rin mentioned that Shinji had tried to form an alliance with her at school, but she rejected him, stating that she had already formed a partnership with Shiro. In the end, Rin explained that they should be concerned about another master at school. Suddenly, they heard a loud noise. It turned out that Shinji had just erected a stronger and more complete barrier than ever before. Upon hearing the sound, they immediately rushed to see what happened and found all the students in the classrooms unconscious. Seeing this, Shiro became furious with Shinji and began searching for him to undo the barrier and save everyone. At that moment, a mystical servant summoned several specters in the form of skeletons in the school corridor. When Rin was attacked by them, Shiro appeared with his famous staff strengthened with his magic, saving the girl. However, they were soon surrounded by more monsters. With no other choice, Shiro used a command seal to summon Saber, who quickly destroyed the skeletons and saved them. After Saber appeared, Shiro asked her to take care of the servant on that floor, while he and Rin went to destroy the barrier Shinji had erected. While the two servants fought in the corridor, Shiro tried to reach the chemistry lab where Shinji was. When they finally found him, Rin kicked Shinji and forced him against the wall to deactivate the barrier around the school. However, for some reason, Shinji seemed to be in a state of shock and fear. Upon entering the room, Shiro saw that Shinji's servant had already been killed by another servant in the school. Seeing this, Rin asked Shinji to reveal the identity of the other servant, but Shinji was too distraught to answer. All they knew was that he ran away, saying that Shiro and Rin would be the next targets. After some time, all the school's students were taken to the hospital and fortunately, none of them died. Following this event, Rin became even more convinced that the hidden master was also a student at the school. Instead of scaring him away, she actually wanted to keep this enemy close to uncover their identity. Later that night, Shinji, desperate, went to the church to request his withdrawal from the Holy Grail War as he had lost his servant. In response, the priest convinces him to continue in the war and even offers him a new servant. The next day, we see that all students were able to return to school normally. In a private conversation with Shiro, Rin says that this Issei person could be the master of that witch. She believes this because Issei is a transfer student from the Temple Monk School, where the witch is located. Upon hearing this, Shiro refuses to believe it, as he cannot imagine his friend doing such horrible things. However, Rin suggests that Issei might be manipulated by the witch. After this conversation, Shiro promises to investigate his friend and find out if he is indeed a master. With that said, Shiro goes to the student council room and forces Issei to undress, all in a casual manner, to see if his partner has any command seals that master 
masters usually have. At the end of the day, Shiro looks for Rin at school, but she has already gone home. On his way home, Shiro sees Rin behind a pole and approaches her. She pulls him to an alley and reveals that she was spying on a blonde-haired guy who had been standing in front of Sakura's house for a while and had now decided to leave without raising any more suspicions. After the guy leaves, Shiro assures Rin that Issei is innocent. The next day, at school, Shiro witnesses Issei and his teacher talking about a certain personal matter. During lunch, he asks his friend if he and Professor Kazuki are so close. Issei replies that the professor is like a true brother to him, as they used to live under the same roof at the Temple of the Monks. Rin overhears and asks Issei for more information about Professor Kazuki. Issei mentions that he doesn't know much about the guy, as he is currently living in a separate part of the temple with his future wife. Upon hearing this, Rin concludes that Professor Kazuki is the hidden master of the school, and his future wife is likely the witch. During the night, Rin and Shiro, accompanied by Saber, go to the only road leading to the Temple of the Monks, waiting for the professor to pass by. When they finally see the professor walking alone on the road, Rin shoots a magical shot at Kazuki. He takes the hit and falls to the ground, but somehow he survives. With the help of his wife, who is the witch, he gets up. All our main characters confirm that they are master and servant. However, it turns out that this professor is not being controlled by the witch. The only thing he didn't know is that the sorceress was draining mana from innocent people for her own benefit. However, Professor Kaziki couldn't care less about the choices the sorceress makes. After the guy said that, Rin, who was still hidden, enters the battlefield and tries to attack the sorceress. At this moment, Saber runs towards the professor to eliminate him and end it. However, despite being just a teacher, Kazuki is skilled enough to stop Saber's sword between his knee and hands. After that, the battle between the professor and Saber intensifies, and surprisingly, Kazuki manages to land a blow that almost puts Saber to sleep. Seeing Saber vulnerable, the sorceress says she will finish killing Saber and asks her master to take care of Shiro and Rin. Then, the professor, who preaches equality between men and women, mercilessly attacks Rin. And when everything seems lost for her and Shiro, our protagonist realizes his weakness. To defeat him, he knows he needs a powerful weapon. So, using his magic, Shiro materializes two powerful swords for the battle and manages to fight on equal terms with the professor. Seeing this turn in the battle, the sorceress grabs her master and flees from the fight. On the other side of the screen, we see Shinji meeting a blonde guy in the sewer, the same one who was in front of his house the other day. This blonde guy reveals himself as Shinji's new servant and promises to help him get revenge on Shiro. However, he will only do that after settling some unresolved matters. The next day, Shiro and Saber rest to recover their energies. Later at school, the teacher informs everyone that Professor Kazuki is ill, so he won't be giving classes for a few days. During his daily life, Shiro begins to feel the side effects of pushing his body to the limit just to project sorts. Sometime later, back at his house, Shiro receives a visit from Rin. She came to his house because Shiro didn't even talk to her at school. During dinner, the three discuss a strategy to face the sorceress in the monk's temple. Rin could simply use her servant, but for some reason, she was avoiding summoning it. In the end, to improve communication between them, Rin decides to live in Shiro's house until their partnership ends. Sometime later, the teacher arrives home, and once again, Shiro is forced to come up with an excuse for another girl to move into his house. Again, the teacher, who is Shiro's half-sister, gets furious and accuses him of trying to build a harem. Before going to sleep, Shiro and Rin have a little conversation, and now the girl finds our protagonist more interesting. During this conversation, Rin reveals that she has had a lot of fun since she met him. As Shiro does not respond to Rin in the same way, the girl decides to go to sleep in the guest room of the house. Sometime later, Archer appears in the warehouse where Shiro is training. Basically, Rin's servant knows a way to deal with the relapses and dizziness that Shiro has been feeling in his body due to pushing his body to its limits in the previous battle. He knows how to handle it because he has experienced something similar in the past. To help Shiro, Archer adjusts his back using magic and then puts Shiro's magical circuits back in their proper places. After treating Shiro's body, Archer says that in three days, our protagonist should be completely recovered and ready to fight again. Not only that, but from now on, our protagonist would be much more powerful than before and his body would handle it just fine. The next day, Shiro wakes up early as usual, accidentally waking up Rin who just wanted to sleep a bit more. While the two have breakfast together, Saber asks if Shiro is feeling better and he says he's ready to die fighting. After saying this, Rin asks him to get ready because they are going together to a nearby city. Everyone goes on this outing and Saber only accompanies them to prevent Shiro from using another command seal to summon her. During this meeting, which seems more like an outing, the trio has a lot of fun visiting shops, restaurants, and even participating in sports. Throughout the time, Rin keeps praising Shiro's appearance and shape, making our protagonist feel embarrassed. During lunch, Rin prepares a picnic for everyone while they talk about life. Happy with the outing, Shiro thanks Rin for planning everything and says he enjoys her spending some days at his house. At
At the end of the outing, everyone gets on the bus to leave. While passing over a bridge, Saber notices something strange happening and alerts Shiro. At that moment, they see that for some reason, the bus is without a driver. Suddenly, the bridge collapses and the bus falls into the river. It's only at this moment that the three realize they are actually in a reality created by the witch. To make matters worse, the witch appears in front of them with Shiro's half-sister, the teacher, being held hostage. According to the enemy, she will release the hostage if Shiro gives her his magical circuits and throws in Saber as a bonus. When Shiro shows reluctance to join her, the witch tells him to do what she wants, or she will kill his teacher. No way out, Shiro ends up accepting to give up everything he has to fight in exchange for a life. When the witch was approaching Shiro's arm, Saber reacts to the villain and manages to free the hostage. At that moment, Shiro uses all his wisdom shouting for Saber to stop risking her life. This order activates a command seal, and the witch takes the opportunity to attack Saber without mercy. Immediately after, the witch activates the power of her noble phantasm, which involves transferring command seals from a master to herself. Thanks to this power, the witch becomes Saber's new master, and her first order to Saber is to kill Rin. Once again, in a burst of intelligence, Shiro steps in front of Rin to protect her. With tears in her eyes, Saber tells Shiro to escape from the place with Rin and their professor. However, the witch disagrees and tries to prevent the trio from escaping. At that moment, Archer appears in the dimension the witch created and starts shooting arrows at her. After creating a hole in the witch's barrier for Rin and Shiro to escape through, the enemy retreats, taking Saber with her. Some time later, we see that now that Shiro is no longer Saber's master, he will need a few days to recover. Nearby, the professor is sleeping under a sleep spell cast by the witch. Later, at the monk's temple, the witch orders her assassin class servant to guard the entrance with all his strength. In summary, she doesn't want anyone entering the temple. However, her servant tries to defy her orders. In response, the witch attacks him and nearly kills him. In the end, she warns that next time, she will kill him if he doesn't obey. After that, the witch goes to the church to claim her prize, stating that, according to her, this war is already won. In response, the priest says that the Holy Grail will only manifest when there is only one servant alive. Hearing this, the woman initiates a fight against the priest, but he proves to be formidable, defeating the monsters the witch summoned. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, Shiro meets Rin on top of a building. There, Rin orders Shiro to stay away from the Holy Grail War since he is now just a civilian. The only option he has is to seek refuge in the church, otherwise, he might end up in a tight spot, just like he almost did at the beginning of the story. With that said, Rin jumps off the building, and her servant catches her in his arms. As for Shiro, he remains there, feeling down. However, as he is the protagonist of this story, I can tell you that in the next part of this video, you'll see him turn the situation around and come out on top.